G'day, my name's Greg, Greg Dybel, as in Bible, and uh, it's nice to be able to chat to you for a bit today. I hope my Aussie accent's not too bad or strong and, uh, and it's quite uh, intelligible to you. Anyway, look, we'll uh, get straight underway. Um, I uh, grew up in a Christian home, uh, but it was uh, always overshadowed by a very sad and tragic event when I was four. My father was uh, accidentally killed in a dreadful car accident, which uh, shattered my mother's life at the time. She was about 26, 27, and uh, I was a four-year-old, and my brother was two. And uh, that, with that overshadowing tragedy, my family uh, grew up in a very strong Christian faith and environment, always believing uh, that uh, God had his hand on us, even in spite of that. Uh, I went to uh, Sunday school and uh, to church as a young man and uh, uh, through there became extremely convinced that God wanted me to be in the ministry, to become a pastor and to train at Theological College, which in time, uh, as a very young lad of 17 and a half, I, uh, I did. Uh, I graduated in four years time and became a very young pastor in a full-time church of Christ. Uh, in a place called Nowra in New South Wales, Australia. Um, <clears throat> we had um, various years of ministry and uh, uh, this uh, went on for about 15 years, both in Queensland and New South Wales. <clears throat> had uh, quite a successful uh, time also in Victoria. Uh, at the time, at the end of my ministry years, or after about 15 years full time, uh, I became a little bit uh, run down and just needed a bit of a break. So I went into the ambulance service and became a fully trained professional ambulance paramedic. Lights and sirens and all the blood and guts and the drama that goes with that. Uh, at which time uh, we'd moved back to Toowoomba in Queensland uh, and uh, one night I was invited to uh, go along to a house meeting to meet a uh, well-known international, the uh, uh, acclaimed and accredited uh, lecturer and Bible scholar by the name of Sir Anthony Buzzard. I had no idea what was in store for me uh, when I met Anthony that night. He gave a wonderful presentation on the things of the kingdom of God and, uh, and uh, the coming of Christ and so on, and all of which, I, with my further uh, full grounding, meant that I uh, concurred and totally agreed with everything that Anthony uh, had presented that night. At the end of the evening, around uh, supper time, uh, which I think for Americans means uh, some sort of uh, after dinner time, we had a cup of tea and got talking, and Anthony asked me a straight out question, which kind of threw me a bit. Uh, he said, do you believe in the doctrine of the Trinity? And I said, of course I do. Doesn't everybody? Uh, maybe a, a few uh, heretics like the Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, who are Arians, uh, they, they, they don't believe in the Trinity. But all of us true believers, all of us Orthodox people, we believe in the essential doctrine of the Trinity. With that uh, introduction uh, to answer Anthony's uh, you know, one-on-one uh, -on -one with me, uh, he then said, well, of course, uh, you do know the Old Testament verse, which is most often quoted by Jesus and the apostles in the New Testament, uh, a verse, by the way, which is the foundation of all of the Bible's Christology, all of the Bible's doctrine and teaching concerning who Jesus is, what his identity is. And I, after all of these decades of uh, theological training, Bible reading, uh, Bible preaching and teaching as an evangelist and as a pastor around Australia and indeed overseas, uh, I sat there like a stunned mullet, which in Aussie lingo means I sat there as though you'd hit me in the head with a hammer. I had no response to this most basic of, basic of questions. Uh, what is the Old Testament verse most often quoted in the New Testament, which is absolutely critical and foundational to Jesus' identity? So I told Anthony, no, I don't know the verse. Well, he said, I'll tell you, it's Psalm 110 verse 1. He said, and of course, uh, you know what that verse says, don't you? And again, it was like I was banged on the head with a lump of 4B2. I had no idea what Psalm 110 verse 1 says. So he quoted it to me, you know, you know it well, I'm sure. The Lord, who is Adonai, said to my Lord, that is David's Lord, um, Adonai, me, my Lord. So here we have one who is the Lord, Jehovah, the Almighty, addressing David's Lord as a uh, my Lord, which could not be an almighty God. So here we have a distinction made in the Old Testament, which you will follow all the way through between uh, the Lord Almighty and my Lord, a human superior. 
So I uh, went away that night after this encounter with Anthony, recognising that I did not understand even the most simplest and most basic of all biblical teachings. Uh, you can imagine I was shattered, and for the next few years, uh, I was uh, walking around in numb land, uh, a land of absolute uh, incredulous, uh, you know, um, uh, numbness, where I re-examined for myself again the most basic doctrine as to who uh, the central characters of the Bible are, who is God and who is Jesus. At the end of that time, I came to the thorough conviction that the Bible's uh, uh, unified and unerring testimony is that God of the Bible, our Father God, is one Lord, a single individual, a divine personal self, and he's not a three in one, mysteriously now one in three. So uh, it's been a, a revolution uh, in my journey to come to this total uh, change of conviction. Uh, I had preached on the Trinity with all conviction. I believed it with all my heart. I addressed all of the fundamental issues there. And to this day, some of those sermons are still going around the countryside by way of recorded message. So uh, that, in essence, very quickly, is a little bit of the background as to how I came to writing the book, which you may have seen. They never told me this in church. Uh, I didn't want to write it at first because I knew that forever this would uh, nail my colours to the mast and that uh, the whole world would know that I was a raving <coughs> nut. Uh, case who had lost his faith and was in peril of a mortal danger of burning forever in the fires of hell. Certainly I lost a lot of friends in uh, my ministry colleagues. Uh, my family thought I had uh, not missed the plot and uh, for many years I walked alone uh, only with the good help of uh, Sir Anthony Buzzard and uh, some of his Restoration Fellowship colleagues. Uh, but having uh, the full conviction in my innermost being that this is what the Bible said. Uh, I was not going to follow a man-made interpretation, a man-made tradition, which I found uh, had been subsequently introduced into the churches or Christianity's message subsequent to the days of the apostles. I wanted to find what was the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Uh, and I found that uh, I had a choice to make. Do I rely on men? Do I trust in men and their traditions and their threats? Uh, do I bow to them or will I follow God? So for me personally, the journey has been both liberating because Jesus said the truth shall set you free. And also it's been quite costly because obedience to God and to his son, Jesus, uh, will always cost you something. Uh, I think it was King David who said, I will not offer to the Lord offerings which cost me nothing. There has to be a certain personal commitment. I mean, even our Lord himself said, whoever would follow me must deny himself and take up his cross um, and follow him. So uh, we have to make up each one of us an individual commitment to the call of Jesus. Will we obey him and listen to his voice supremely or will we listen to the voices of others? So that's basically and very quickly how the book came about. Uh, for some, uh, before I actually sat down and began the book, um, I had this growing uh, and um, uh, deepening conviction that I must write these things down. And um, as I say, initially I resisted it because I knew there'd be a lot of work involved and uh, a lot of uh, personal cost involved too. So uh, in brief, I came one day to sit down in front of my computer and I began typing a few thoughts that were in my head down and away it went. Um, the process itself took about 18 months to two years and uh, the result is the book, they never told me this in church. It's a how to read the Bible with a whole new understanding, a whole new paradigm, uh, which I'd come to experience. The book itself um, has had uh, a remarkable little career. Uh, it's uh, changed and, uh, and made a great big difference in a lot of people's lives, all the way down from uh, pastors, uh, evangelists, ministers, all the way and mainly, of course, down to the pew where the average person is uh, and I'm just an average bloke, so uh, hopefully that's, uh, that's uh, been good. Um, the, uh, the initially, uh, there was a major book chain in Australia who agreed to sell my book on their shelves, which initially shocked me because I thought they won't have this. But for two years, uh, they did sell the book and it uh, exceeded all of their sales expectations uh, until the point one day uh, they uh, inexplicably withdrew the book from the shelves and, uh, and did not sell it anymore and did not reorder any new stock. 
i found out subsequently that a lot of uh, people's lives were being dramatically affected by it and a lot of church people were asking their ministers questions and their pastors issues that they were seemed to be either hostile towards or unable to answer and so a lot of these uh, men in authority the men in the cloth apparently put some pressure on this book chain uh, that if they did not remove it from their sales shelves that their clientele their customers would also be told not to uh, purchase any further st uh, stock through their, their outlets. So um, I was very disappointed in that, of course, because this, uh, in that two years while it was being sold in that way, uh, we had an awful lot of people who uh, made uh, the move uh, to believing that the central character of the scriptures, the God of the Bible, is one Lord, one God, and not three. And uh, all of the other issues that go uh, and follow on from that. So the book itself has been a rather a mighty and a wonderful tool and, and I'm just so humbly thankful that God has seen fit to change, literally change people's lives through it. Uh, even academics, uh, well-renowned within the Christian church, well-renowned scholars have read the book, promised to get back to me, promised to review it uh, and have uh, been unable to refute the arguments that are central to it. So I'm fairly confident that we're onto a good thing here. Uh, to the glory of our God. So, um, if any of you out there uh, is a book retailer, uh, has access to being able to put this book on the secular shelves and the Christian bookshelves, if it can help us with that, that would be wonderful to get this message out. Uh, and so that's in brief my background and the story as to how the book came.